Hi and welcome to the devotion on Luke chapter 9. It's all about God's Messiah and carrying his cross. There are three parts to this. The first part is the reading. The second part is a very spontaneous reflection, devotion on the reading, which is a bit slow. I apologize for this, but it was done on the spot without any preparation. And the third part then, also again, a quite spontaneous prayer in response to this reflection on the reading. And all this took place at a very special place a few days ago. Hi, I'm in the gardens of Lawned Abbey, the retreat center of the Diocese of Leicester. And I'm really standing in front of what is called the Calvary. Let me do the reading from Luke chapter 9 starting at verse 18. Once when Jesus was praying in private and his disciples were with him, he asked them, Who do the crowd say I am? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah and still others that one of the prophets of long ago has come back to life. But what about you? he asked. What do you say I am? Peter answered, God's Messiah. Jesus strictly warned them not to tell this to anyone and he said, the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders the chief priests and the teachers of the law, and he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. Then he said to them all, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will save it. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world and yet lose or forfeit their very self. Whoever is ashamed of me and my words, the Son of Man will be ashamed of them when he comes in his glory and in the glory of the Father and of the holy angels. And I wanted to uh, focus on two things. The first one being that, uh, first of all, and Peter declares that Jesus Christ is the Messiah at the beginning. And we notice that this declaration comes from a situation where Jesus was praying, where his disciples were alongside him during prayer. So Jesus, to go back, Jesus had kind of found and called his disciples, had walked alongside him, had already performed miracles. But it is at this moment um, that Peter recognizes Jesus as the Messiah out of prayer, not when witnessing miracles, um, but from out of prayer, from being close to God that this recognition comes. So I want us to ponder on the significance of this, to ponder on the way we connect with our living God, Jesus Christ, and the way we acknowledge uh, and recognize Jesus as our uh, Messiah, as our Savior, through the intimate relationship we have with him. And I wonder to what extent we, uh, at a regular level, daily, um, maintain this relationship with the living God to acknowledge the awesome news that Jesus Christ is the Messiah, the giver of hope, God, who came onto this earth. Uh, to share goodness with us. So that's the first thing. And the second thing I want to focus on is what happens then 
that Jesus uh, declares that to be a follower also means to kind of give up your identity, yourself, and to carry the cross. Now, this is quite uh, something. This is quite shocking. And why, why is this so? So again, it's a turning point in Luke because it prepares the reader for what will happen to Jesus, who indeed will be persecuted, who will suffer um, from then onwards. Um, it's a turning point that his disciples witness also firsthand the suffering of Jesus Christ. So why is this? So why do we as followers of Christ need to embrace this? Why is it that the cross Easter uh, uh, Friday, Good Friday comes hand in hand with Easter Sunday, the rejoicing, the resurrection? I think it is deeply, has deeply to do with uh, us having to give up the strong uh, I inside us that wants to always put ourselves first and give that up, deny ourselves and recognize that it is Jesus Christ who is the creator, who is the hope, who knows answers, who can heal and that we don't have solutions, that we should actually step back, we should sacrifice ourselves, um, that do not come naturally to us. Um, loving our neighbors, even if these neighbors um, seem kind of not always friendly to us, making real sacrifices, denying kind of our instinctive uh, will to put ourselves first, and giving that up and being humble and loving everyone else, even though they might be alien and not always nice to us, as much as we love ourselves. So that's the second point I would like to make. Father, I pray that we gain in understanding who your son is, that he is God's Messiah your son, your beloved son, who you send to this earth to help us, to save us, to heal us, to give us hope. And I pray that we seek your son closer, ever closer, that we build a relationship with him based on prayer, that we seek him so close, so intimately, that whilst we worship him as our Saviour, as our Messiah, the one who gives us hope, the creator of all, that at the same time we build this wonderfully loving and intimate relationship with him, because that's what he offers us. And Father, I also pray that we learn better to deny ourselves and take up our cross daily to follow your son Jesus Christ that we are more open towards helping others reaching out to others rather than putting ourselves first that we are prepared to openly declare your gospel, even though that might be sometimes difficult and challenging in the context we live in. I pray that we are more willing to carry the cross of your son as well and be with him in the knowledge also that we are also with him when he is resurrected, that we have that hope 
of resurrection in us whilst carrying the cross. I pray for strength in all this. And I pray this in your name. Amen.